Uh, it's co-hosts Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X-Play, the show that is totally looking for an Arcanite Reaper. We'll trade you the Lay of Lilies and an intern for it. The Lay of Lilies? That's completely worthless. It allows you to summon a lotus fruit every 15 minutes. It's like webband.com of World of Warcraft. If you have no idea what we're talking about, that's okay, because on today's show, we have two nostalgic fighting games from the 90s and a whole bunch of handheld games. They're simple, they're addictive, and some of them aren't even 3D. So even if you don't know your night owls from your high elves, you'll find something to enjoy on this program. Plus, the icing on the cake, a look at the new Beautiful Joe game, and more footage from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, the CG movie that proves androgynous men really do have the biggest swords. But we begin with a classic Capcom fighting game from the 90s. Sure, everyone knows Street Fighter and Marvel Bush's Capcom, but there's a lesser known Capcom fighting series that's finally getting a second life on the PSP. And it has werewolves. Here's our review of Darkstalker's Chronicle, the Chaos Tower. Love? Herpes? Mm-hmm. They're why Robin Williams' wife almost divorced him in the 80s. Allegedly. Allegedly, of course. The Darkstalkers looks pretty good on the PSP. I mean, these 2D fighters are capable of enjoying a second life on the handhelds. But when they try to put them back on the consoles, not so much. Still, that didn't stop Capcom from milking a dead horse. Here's Capcom fighting evolution for the Xbox. Beating. Beating a dead horse. Did I say milking? Yeah. Two Capcom fighting games, two platforms, and two scores of three out of five. Mm -hmm. In other words, unless you're a collector who loves 2D fighting, don't buy either of these games. Rent them. Gamefly.com. Yep, they have hundreds of games you can rent or buy, so you can save your money for other things. Like contributions to Live Aid, donations to your favorite charity. Or buying action figures. That's what I would do, because I'm a very bad person who needs to live through model plastic. And three, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Sometimes I accidentally inhale and, and I die. Yeah. Welcome back to X Play. Last year, we reviewed a little game called Goldeneye Rogue Agent, also known as Goldeneye Rouge Agent for those of you who can't spell. It's the follow up to one of the greatest first person shooters ever made for the consoles, Goldeneye 007 for the N64. So we thought it would totally rock. Oh my lord, were we totally wrong! EA, who once made awesome games, turned out an abominable shooter that sullied the reputation of the legendary original. Sally, like resourceful hunters, EA uses every part of the license. Which means Goldeneye Rogue Agent is headed for the Nintendo DS, looking for redemption in a portable form. Here's our review. And then live to tell about it. If that isn't heroic, I don't know what is. She looks like one of the women from Tao Feng. Well, she has an acting career to fall back on. She hasn't made a movie since Vamp. Oh. As I was saying, Sean Connery's likeness will be starring in the From Russia With Love game, which sounds like a dating sim, but it isn't. So hopefully EA will get this one right, or at least put the line, who's the man now, dog, in the game. And now, a total change of subject. Cool. In 2003, an awesome action game called Beautiful Joe was released. None of you people played it because you didn't buy a GameCube, you cheap bastards. Then it came out on the PS2. And you still didn't buy it. Well, that didn't stop Capcom from making a new Joe game for the Cube. And maybe someone other than us will play it. Here's our first look at the new Beautiful Joe. Cute. What are you implying? 